With its iconic towers, pristine Renaissance city walls, lush landscapes and energetic atmosphere, a trip to Tuscany cannot be complete without a visit to the charming city of Lucca. I'm really loving this city. Yesterday, we kicked off our adventures through the city as we explored Lucca's historic center, sampling a classic Lucchese sweet cake, visiting the house and museum of the world-renowned opera composer Giacomo Puccini, and the city's exquisite cathedral before ending the day with a typical Tuscan street food and possibly some of the best gelato flavors we've tried in Italy. Today, we accidentally stumble across a surprising cafe as we sample a few Lucchese biscuits. It sounds like a potion from Harry Potter. It does too. Climb the two highest and most important towers in the city. Extremely narrow. It's not the most comforting <laughs> tower we've climbed. So happy we did this. Stroll along the ancient city walls and wander through the beautiful botanical gardens before ending the evening roaming the streets to find some typical culinary dishes of Luca. Pizza, beer, <laughs> rugby is exactly what I feel like. We're Matteo and Misha. We're currently traveling to all 20 regions of Italy on the ultimate Italian road trip. I'm literally on cloud nine. This is exactly my kind of day. Subscribe to follow the adventure. Should be a church in this piazza. And three, two, one. Hey, hey there it is. Cafe Santa Zita. Ooh, they have biscotti. Okay, we're gonna come to the church in a second, but we're gonna have some coffee and biscotti first. Oh, oh that looks so good. Wow. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, grazie mille. This is oh, that was stunning. <gasps> Whoa. I was not expecting this. this I didn't do that much research. This is the this bougiest, this is the bougiest cafe we've been to. Are you joking? There's a little garden. Buongiorno, ciao. How stunning is this? Nice find. This is this is <laughs> yeah, cool. Nice. Eh? This is so beautiful. There's literally a piano back here. Excellent work. <laughs> I just heard garden. I was like, garden? I mean garden. Honestly, I would pay any price for anything. <laughs> I don't know how we ended up there. I kind of have this rule where I will never sit down at a cafe if the espresso is more than a euro 20 okay walking into this place was so surprising that i will literally give them all my money i don't even care this is the coolest cafe we've been into in italy so far in my opinion we just thought there was outdoor seating and then the second we walked in it was just like this other world so looks a little fancy but i'm okay with it it's a full-on menu yeah, there's a lot of pages it's like a book okay so what are we looking at? We wanted to get some biscotti for breakfast. There's literally everything that says biscotti di Luca. Oh wait, that's the index. <laughs> so, there's so many pages, there's an index. There. Five pieces, three euros. You know what, we're gonna do that. Okay, so then the espresso is 250. Cappuccino's 350, it's only a euro 50 more. So I'm gonna do that. They have lunch, they have like a whole menu here. Oh my God, how many pages are there? Vorrei un cappuccino, per favore. Si, sí. due cappuccini. Le cinque biscotti. Si, sí, la nostra specialità. C'è un'altra cosa più unico. Tipica di Lucca è la torta della nonna. Okay, la sí, torta sí. di riso. Torta di riso. Allora, e i biscottini. Si. Sí. Vai. What was she saying was good, but was sold out. Okay, she said it. La, la, <laughs> la June Gilles here. June Gilles. Oh, that is a tongue twister. Exclusive for their cafe. I wonder if La Gilles Gilles is like a your normal croissant or... Oh, like a cornetto? Cornetto, yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay, so this is like a cake, like a rice pudding cake. These are so tiny and cute. They're a lot smaller than I thought they would be, but they look adorable. I'm gonna try and 
as we try them. Figure out what each which, one is. Which one? So the green ones are actually vegetable. No way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's like a veggie stick for breakfast. <laughs> That is the lightest cookie I've ever eaten. You can't really taste it. Like the, veg the veggie. There's veggie in this. I don't get an underlying hint of anything. Oh! At the end. It tastes like a Christmas cookie. It does, but there's definitely an aftertaste of that. Like, veggie undertone. That's kind of crazy. It's really good, though. It's so different. Let's cleanse our palates with this cappuccino. It's one little annoying flower. Mm. God, that is frothy. That is so good. I don't know which other one's supposed to be green because I'm missing one word in each of these descriptions. Elitrisu. It's been a while since, since Matteo has to use his Italian, so. No, let's but no matter how much Italian learn, there's always words that you don't know. So, that okay. too. Does it taste different? Hmm. It's really good. I mean, it tastes very similar to the first one. Do you think they accidentally put two in the same one? I feel like this is the same as the first one. It's really nice. It's really, really good. But it does taste the same as the first one. She may have told me that they're out of one. <laughs> <laughs> I obviously pronunciate it really well because they don't slow down when they talk. <laughs> I really like that one. That's very interesting. Hmm. This is different already aesthetically, visually, from any biscotti I was assuming we would get because I'm used to like those big chunky ones I thought we'd be like dunking. These are much more refined and much more delicate. But we do need some translation. Okay, Matteo's going to translate here for us. Sure. Short crust pastry. Mm. That's what Frona is. She said a sweet pastry, so it's, we know it like shortbread. Yeah. Mm. Finoli is manna. Which one's finoli? Absolutely no idea. <laughs> One of those ones. Then, Eli Crisio. I spell it wrong. <laughs> What is that word? Helicrisium. That sounds like a potion from Harry Potter. It does too. Butter, salt, and Harry Potter potion. Biscuit. All right, let's just. I don't know which one that is, but I'm pretty sure one of them has pine nuts. I mean, chestnuts. So one of them must taste more like Christmas. Oh. Christmas? Mm. I think this is a chestnut one. The chestnuts are quite thick. The consistency of this one's really dense. The other ones were quite light. This one's dense, but delicious. I think this is the chestnut one. I would guess that that's chestnut. I could be totally wrong. Can you tell we don't cook very much? See, it's got the, um, the acidity of a, a chestnut. They're all slightly different. None of them have been sweet mm. in a short, ready way. This is like a perfect morning biscuit. None of them have been oversweet at all. Next up. Before you do it. All right, watch me turn to the back of this menu. There's an English section. You should have checked. Biadina di Tista. Tista Biadina, that just basically gave it to you in the same exact way, flipped around. And pandas. Is there an English version of this? Like literally check. No, an English version. Okay, we think this right. is the pine nut one. Mm. Maybe that's butter sauce. No, this is, this is butter. That's butter. Okay. So that's the butter. <laughs> And that is so buttery. I love that. That is the, the most buttery cookie ever. But it has Heli Christian in it. That's um, butter. That's, that's straight butter. That is so good. If you really love butter, you'd love that. I really love butter, so that's to me is. We had a similar cookie growing up that my grand used to make for us. We called them melting moments. Oh, they were made of a lot of butter. Really? Mm. I remember you talked about that a lot. Yeah. This is getting impossible. Is that a type of flour? What's your, are you sure? Please let us know. Is your translation not going from Italian to Italian? It's going to Italian to English. Okay. Camellia <laughs> is Camellia. Because every time we type something, it's coming out exactly the same. If we've established anything right now, we are not cooks, nor food experts, nor Biotists. Let's see, this one's nice. This one's got like a it's nice and it's the biggest one. It's got powdered sugar on it. That's not chocolate. That's not chocolate. <laughs> At this mm. rate, we've been wrong about all of them. <laughs> mm. This one's the butter. No, I mean, this is the pine nut one. Maybe that's a bit in a DT style. Mm. I think this is the pine nut one. That's really good though. It's just like a cookie in the middle. Um, there's no like filling. You can see it's a tiny pine nut. No, it's, it is. It's like in there. See that? Oh, there's a tiny pine nut. 
That one's my favorite. Mm, really? Mm -hmm. So just to set in the cookie. Yeah. Just like that, our little, our little dish is done. Mm. Now onto the bigger slice. This is like a rice pudding cake. I love rice pudding. My mom used to make it all the time when I was a kid and it kind of looks like that's what the, like the inside looks very custard rice pudding like. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It looks like it's got a nice golden shell with some powdered sugar. What? Wow. I don't think this one has a description. It's rice pudding. Mm. And that's like custard on the side. That was straight up as if you put rice pudding in a cake. Wait, wait. wait. Mm, put that on it. Well, if you spend a lot of time with Luca, you could come here and try these things all wow. day. I love that. That is nice. I'm sad I didn't start from the crusty side. I love the edges of a cake. Not sweet, but not savory. It's as though you'd imagine a rice pudding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's but like, like in a in a yeah, it's condensed it's like, like refreshing in a way. It is. It's really light. I kind of I feel like it looks very thick. It's actually really light. I love the edges of a of a cake. So. Are you in love? The edges even better because you've got the crispiness of the the outside on that. Mm. I like it. Mm. Mm. They have a budino di riso. I the love one from Florence. If you just watched our, what is it, the San, San Ambrosio Market video, we got Purina di Riso. Absolutely delicious. But it's nice to try something new. Just remember, yep. in Italy, when they bring you this little paper, you pay on your way out. You can go to the front and you pay at the register, at the till. It's kind of a lot more convenient because you can kind of just sit here for as long as you really want. They don't really say anything. Now we're ready to go. Oh, that was delicious. I'm so sad to be leaving. Just like Downton, we better get our cheers. Is that exactly six inches? Yeah, this one's a little bit less. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Let's go. Grazie mille. So when we arrived here, we thought this was just the uh, seating section. It just looks like a normal cafe, but only when she asked us if we wanted to sit in the garden, and we were a little bit confused, like what garden, did she lead us to the back? So if you're here, that was a completely just surprising experience. Wow. Piazza San Frediano. In San Frediano. The and then you're right here, so you can get some breakfast before you see the church. That's hilarious. My doctor says I need glasses. Oh, water boy. Thank you. Once you stay in the sun one too many times, you start to feel faint. You never stop drinking water again. <laughs> the Basilica of San Frediano is one of the oldest places of worship in Lucca. It was mentioned for the first time in a document dating to the year 685 as a Lombard era basilica. Famous for the large mosaic on its facade, dating to the end of the 13th century and an extremely rare ornamentation in the Romanesque style. In Tuscany, the only other facade decorated like this is on the church of San Miniato al Monte in Florence. The mosaic depicts Christ the Redeemer ascending to heaven in a mandala held by two angels. The figure of the Virgin is missing between the apostles, which was removed when the modern window was installed. The artwork is in a Byzantine style and is attributed to the Luca-based school of Berlinghieri. So we just found out that this one also has a tower. So this theory of only two towers in the city is really just it's finished, Matteo. It's done. We should just go home now. I mean, I don't know why we have you here. So what are we going to... No, we're not climbing this one, though. Three euros for the Basilica, right? Yes. Okay. Quite, quite crazy. It's a 
not. Thoughts on the Church of San Frediano? Large, dark, very cool. Not the darkest though. This is actually much light. This is much lighter than the other yeah. churches we visited yesterday. I feel like the outside looks quite bland for what you get inside. Mm -hmm. And even though the inside of the dome at the altar isn't painted, each of the little uh, chapels that we were passing, I don't, they're not chapels. They're like, chapels. They're like, little yeah, chapels, little yeah. chapels. Those were the ones that were beautifully decorated with, the, with like paint from, you know, floor to ceiling and just absolutely stunning. It was dark. It but... was dark because of its Romanesque style. Yes. The windows it... are small. <laughs> That's true. It was very simple, which I actually loved. Very understated from the outside and the inside, but you can actually feel the beauty of this one. I actually think I prefer this one to yesterday's church. Yesterday's just kind of felt like just dark. This yeah. one, simple, beautiful, elegant, very moving. Yeah. And so that actually wraps up our three out of 100 churches you can <laughs> see here in Luca, because those are the three main ones. So that's enough churches now. Now we're going to go climb some towers. Just like in Florence, you also get your plaques for famous people and where they were born. Luis Gilardi. Oh, hey, look. Uh, gelateria. I'm coming back here later for that meringue. When you're walking around, don't forget to look up because we've been on the street multiple times and we just noticed that this is what the wall looks like. It looks like there used to be giant columns there. Pillars. And on that note, if you think we rock, then like and subscribe nice. to this video. <laughs> that was corny. <laughs> Sicily rocks. So what did we put that for? The drone shot you took of us standing on a rock. Yeah. This is where we live. So you can either buy a combined ticket for Torre delle Ore and Corredi Guinigi, Guinigi, I think that's how you say it. So we're gonna go check what the clock tower looks like, see if it's the one we wanna climb as well. From my understanding, it's like marble column behind me. It's actually part of the ancient Roman amphitheater. Some of the only remains that are left here. Okay, so the bell tower is right in front of us. Let's check it out. But I can see that the people are actually looking over a railing at the top, so maybe we get some really sick views from there. It is the highest point in the city. Yeah. Okay, seems like a very hidden entrance here. We made it. Okay, so you can get a 15 euros, you get a two day ticket to Torre Guinigi, Torre de Ore, and the Botanical Gardens. Well, the Botanical Gardens on the other side of the city, so if we walk here on the walls, maybe we can go and check that out. We're gonna do all three. We're Let's gonna do, do it. it. Yeah, one is better crowd. Okay. Let's okay. Let's just go. Right. I'm on Amy. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao. We're doing it. Committed. He said there's only two people in this tower right now, so we just we're going for it. Interesting. These are like. How many? Two hundred and seventy steps. Oh, interesting. Wow, these are very new steps compared to like what <laughs> we're used to in a tower. Oh, I hope that's the case when we get further up. <laughs> so you can buy a combined ticket for the two towers, as well as the botanical garden, which can we, costs... Can we pause for a quick sec? <laughs> Sorry, on the tour, like... <sighs> whoa, whoa, come closer. This, it's just like... Is this the thing that's weighted down? This is like some hunchback. Oh, it's getting dark. Oh, God. I think this is what people meant when they said you climb a bunch of rickety stairs. Okay, I'm gonna just... We'll get back to the info in a second. But this is actually pretty crazy. This is cool in here. The, the stairs are still staying in this nice, like, wooden situation, but oh my goodness. You can see, like... Oh, that is not an elevator, by the way. That is for the clock tower. Whoa. Alrighty. And we're moving. Okay. Yeah, these are like some, this is like metal. The first clock dates back to 1370. These inside pieces we see are part of the clock at the top. Yeah, they're like very thin metal uh, stringies. <laughs> I feel like I'm sitting in a violin. I mean, that's pretty crazy. There's a combination ticket for 15 euros and you get access to the two towers as well as the botanical gardens. However, he said the system is down right now. 
it's literally the theme of Italy, including its government. Um, then, <laughs> so it's six euros for this tower, six euros for the other tower. And he says, tonight, the botanical gardens are actually free. So he, he looked on the camera and he said, there's only two people at the top and that it would be worth going up. So on, we, here we go. It, it actually just looks like it keeps going. <laughs> Said it before, say it again, say it forever. September, October, actually now I'm going a little bit into November. It's my favorite time to actually go do stuff in Italy because believe it or not, it's still warm and there's a lot less people. There's definitely still tour groups. You might have to wait for like a second, but not nearly as much in the summer. Oh, oh. that breeze is delightful. Oh, that's already that's a so, sick what view. Is that? Oh, you can see the back yeah. of the Archangel Michael on the church. As I was saying, September even is still very hot. I mean, it's 80 degrees today. It's been 80 degrees for the last few days and we're already a few days into October. So if you want warm weather with less crowds and also reduced prices for things like accommodation and tickets, definitely recommend the fall. And if everything looks really old, that's because it is. <laughs> Luca, the city itself, dates back to the Etruscans, the people before the Romans. We're getting closer. Still modern stairs. Oh, wow. Oh my goodness. Whoa. There's the other one we're going to. The one with the trees. This breeze is phenomenal. right there. This breeze is everything that right is now. So good. We're not totally at the top yet though. Watch your head. Towards the middle of the 18th century, the clock that was placed here in 1699 began to show signs of wear and tear. And so another man had to come and redo the clock and create a new one for the modern age. And that's your Sparknotes version of the uh, Tour de Ore. <laughs> made in Switzerland. Of course, mm -hmm. the clock was made in Switzerland. Okay, so we've made it to the top of this uh, steel contraption here. Oh. It's not the most, what's the word, safe feeling? Comforting. Com comforting <laughs> tower we've climbed. <laughs> But it's cool nonetheless. Yeah, I'm loving the, the modern like floorboards and steps, but when you look up, you're like, oh my, remember to duck because I almost smacked my head on that more. <laughs> the adventure continues. It creaks a lot. <laughs> uh, all I read online was it creaks. And it I, does don't, creak. I don't know why I'm like ducking so much, but I feel like at any moment I'm about to hit my head. Whoa. Was this the OG one? No, that's not the new one. Is it? Or maybe. Oh yeah, that makes sense because it's connected to the things down there. Got a few more floors to go up. And it's starting to curve. <laughs> okay, this is what I mean. I'm just crouching now the whole time. Oh, I think we're almost at the top. Whoa. I only have one, one thing to say. The city of two towers. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven the distance. Eight over there. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. <laughs> You're just not gonna get over it. Oh, look, another church. So you have 100 churches. <laughs> Did say that the other one 
is a lot more crowded. And can we just talk about these mountain ranges surrounding us? Behind us, you've got the Apian Alps. Then, I don't know what's off in that direction, but Pisa is that way. So there's a mountain between us and Pisa. And then from this side, a whole entire another mountain range. However, that side doesn't have any. The botanical garden's right there somewhere. <laughs> Climbing buildings, towers, things in any country, any city, any rooftop is my favorite activity. I just absolutely love views like this. It just gets you every time. I feel like we've gone up a lot of things. We have spritz on rooftops, we've climbed a lot of towers, and I still never get over the view of these Italian cities from up above. And just even seeing like the little houses down below, city life, you can hear music coming from different directions. It's honestly just so beautiful. It's hard, I feel like when, I'm, when we take the videos, it's really hard to capture the essence of this on a video. So we do our best to show you, but if you're here and you have these opportunities, definitely take them because the videos and the pictures that you see will not do it justice as it does when you see it in person. Now we have it all to ourselves. All right, so according to my research, now that I'm rereading it, this tower is 50 meters tall and is the highest point in the city. However, it says that two towers remain in the city. The rest were either destroyed or cut down. So, there may be more than two towers, some of them are just shorter now. So there's our fact being cleared up. <laughs> we finally got to the bottom of this. <laughs> in the Middle Ages, Luca actually had more than 130 towers in the city. They were all built by rich merchant families as a symbol of their power, as well as an instrument of defense and control of the surrounding territory of the city. These towers were cut down or collapsed during the 16th century. And now we're gonna go down. Now we're gonna go down. We got our fix. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> Definitely worth climbing. I don't know what it's going to be like in the middle of summer, but it's a lot less crowded than it looks than the other tower over there. On to the next activity. Clock. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ryan. That was awesome. On the way to our tree tower, we've come across a communal bath. I think it may be like a spa. Mm -hmm. Oh, lovely. Oof. Hey, look, another did I mention, church. <laughs> did I mention the city of 100 churches? Opa! They're also collecting the glass. Every time Mateo takes us down a street and I'm like, this is a dead end. It's not. That's pretty cool. Though. Whoa. I'm really loving this city. This is crazy. It's so quiet. I'm actually pretty hungry, but we need to go see this botanical garden and get some shots of the walls before sunset just so that we can make the tower before sunset <laughs> or a time crunch it's kind of nuts how you can go from like a very bustling street you just take one turn and these some of these streets get so quiet it's actually quite delightful it feels very peaceful i'm really loving this city Oh, <laughs> how pretty. It's like a little moat. One day when we have a house, it's going to have a moat just because it doesn't even feel like we're in the city anymore. Luca's city walls are the only walls in the whole of Italy to be completely accessible to pedestrians. At four kilometers long, they offer a panoramic view around the entire city of Luca. 
Built between the mid 1600s and early 1800s, they are still entirely intact today. Fun fact is they were never actually used for defensive purposes for which they were actually built. However, in 1812, the river that runs parallel to the city, the Serkio River, burst its banks and the city of Luka would have been flooded if it weren't for the walls. So all they had to do was reinforce the doors and they managed to keep the water out of the city and prevent it from flooding. It was later turned into a full-blown public park in the late 1800s. And today you can now take a walk along its walls, you can ride your bicycle, go for a run, hire a little motorized little scooter and just have yourself a day. Taking a stroll along Luca's two and a half mile stretch of pristine Renaissance walls allows you to truly appreciate the Lucchese atmosphere of one of Tuscany's most gorgeous cities. Removed from the hustle and bustle of the densely packed streets brings you into an almost nature reserve feel surrounded by lush greenery. We spent several evenings walking along this beautiful path, enjoying the sights and sounds of this incredibly special place, surrounded by trees beginning to change colors with the autumn season. It's so peaceful up here. I honestly forgot we were in like a pretty bustling city. It's such a delightful time of day. I love being in these kinds of areas around sunset. Um, the sun is going to set in about an hour and a half, so since we're at the Botanical Gardens, we're going to check that out quick and then go climb the tree tower. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, it's, it's a tongue twister. But we will be doing that after we check out the Botanical Garden and hopefully make it up there for sunset. So let's go. So for the Planet Earth Festival that's happening this week, it's free entry. Perfect. We lucked out. Such a well-kept garden, a really well-kept garden. It's nice, they have this kind of accessibility uh, path, you could say, if you have a wheelchair, mobility issues. So they have that running through, otherwise it's uh, these small little rocks. But it is stunning in here. This is the Botanico Orto di Luca, the Botanical Garden in Luca. Wow. It's pretty small, but I think that's why it looks so well kept i mean it's like really literally every little square inch of this place has been looked after from my understanding there's a whole variety of plants and flower species within here this is the kind of tree you want to climb this is like some tarzan some tarzan stuff I seem to have come across this little pond area Ooh, looks like a painting These trees are absolutely spectacular. That was rather lovely. A pleasant little garden. I enjoyed that. So if you do get the combined ticket to climb the towers, the, the third thing you get with that combined ticket is the botanical garden uh, for the 15 euro, but luckily it was free today. And the sun will be down in an hour. And now we're going to go climb the tree tower. <laughs> and not only do you kill the three birds with one ticket, but also the walls are out here, so you can actually take a nice stroll on them. One of the, like, I think they call it like a rampart that goes up onto the wall. It's located on the entrance of the Botanical Garden. Yeah, definitely worth it. This is truly an aesthetically pleasing city. Looks like we've come across an ancient gate to the city. From my understanding Porta San Gervasio was part of like the ancient gates before they built the walls outside because I mean this doesn't really make sense to be inside the walls surely this should be the entrance at the walls. That's us. What are you looking at? I'd love to like throw a glow stick or something down there. Oh, wow. That's a lot of cobwebs. Ooh. We've made it to our tower. It's gonna to be six euros to go up, but we're gonna do it now. Sunsets in 
50 minutes. They close in like an hour and a half. So hopefully we'll catch us at the perfect time. Made it. Oh, wait, they've updated the hours. Now they're closed at 6.30. Um, can we do it super fast? Yeah. For sure. How long does it take to get to the top? Perfect. We'll go fast. Gracias. <laughs> Okay, so they just updated the time, and instead of closing at 7.30, they now close at 6.30, and it's 6.05 right now. She said it takes about five minutes to get to the top, but we're just gonna commit. We're gonna do it. Taking these bad boys two at a time. Two at a time. Let's go. Oh, this is the breeziest tower I've ever climbed because there's no fencing. We got this. <sighs> we're free back down at 6.30, so we got like 10 minutes at the top. We can do this, it's fine. Everybody walked like 7K today. Wow, that is looking high. <laughs> Please excuse me dying in the background. I always think I'm fit until I have to do something like this. I'm trying. I'm trying. Oh, wow. Man, normally the Stairmaster is how I warm up at the gym, but doing it this fast without warning. <laughs> a little bit uh, trickier. You do get a nice view on the way up, but we don't have time for that, do we? No. No, we don't. <laughs> go, go, go. No, I think we're almost there. I'm proud of us. Mind over matter. That's a nice view. Onward and upward. And all of a sudden, it just got extremely narrow. Ow. Yes, it is narrow. Right? Oh my god! <sighs> Don't smack your head. Come on, last one. Last one. Last one. Man, we should have timed that. I think it's been about two and a half minutes. How do we feel? That was definitely three minutes max. We did it. This view is definitely worth it. We're literally just like the garden was actually planted here as a sign of rebirth for the city of Luca by the Guinigi family. I'm a little out of breath, but I'm so happy we did this. I really wanted to be up here at sunset. For some, I think maybe because now it's autumn. They, you know, a lot of places do change their hours. They reduce their hours and when it's off season. Yeah. So that's probably why. Don't believe the Yeah. So if you're here in October, it's 6.30, not 7.30. But luckily, the sun is still giving that nice golden glow. And it's actually a lot, compared to our other tower, with the trees, it actually gives it like a more of a... Earthy vibe. Yeah, you know, like just more of a, you're on the ground, but not on the ground vibe. So that's cool. Absolutely breathtaking. Nice. So you have a hundred churches in case you haven't been told. In case you haven't been paying attention. Yeah. Okay, so there's a little megaphone up here that's telling everyone that the tower is going to be closing in less than 10 minutes, so we all have to make our way back down now. Oh, I'm happy at least we got to see it at sunset. Ready? Now we must go down. We don't like disobeying the rules. 
We got this. Ooh, we made it up here in three minutes. I'm sure we can make it down faster before they close. We got this. We got this. I mean, that is just... The handle's so sticky. I know. That's the, the first thought I had. I just didn't say it. To be fair, it's been here for a long time. Oh, my goodness. You can, like, literally... I I can't even fit. Like, this, this railing's the length of my hips. Oh, that's pretty sick. We got this. Knees to chest, knees to chest, knees to chest. Okay. I mean, you still get a nice view from the grates here. I do love Golden Hour. You look like an angel. <laughs> yeah. We still got a bit of a ways to go, but we got this. I'm not gonna lie, I do love how uh, breezy, this is definitely the breeziest tower we've ever climbed. Uh, other than that tiny staircase at the top, it also feels like it has the most, the most width. Um, not as narrow as the Duomo in Florence, for instance. But that top little little one will get you. I've got such an annoying tick. My DC shoes always pick up stones. There's little <laughs> gaps that they go into, and I have one, and these stairs are metal, and every- Is that what that is? Ends. I thought someone was wearing high heels. No, it's me ticking off my stone. That's hysterical. What time is it? 6.28. 6.28, what's up? Two minutes to spare. Grazie, ciao. Hmm, I wonder what happens if you're not back down here in time. Do they just lock you in the tower? But the tower um, was cool, but it was the same price as the other tower. And the other tower was empty. So, yeah. I recommend the clock tower. Rather yeah, if you one. if you had to pick just one, I would definitely recommend the clock tower. This one was really cool, actually. It was just so different from any other tower we've climbed. Yeah. But um, the, it's just so narrow to walk around that there's no space. Like, if one person is standing there, you cannot get around them. Like, someone has to move for you to get past them. Like, they have to come out. Um, the other one, at least, was more open, more airy. You could move around. This one felt definitely way more constrained. Uh, it's and very people hard. people just kind of stay in the way. Yeah, and so then people would like... just, like, sit in their spot so there's just no way you're gonna get around and i think it was actually busier earlier i've just been running and sprinting and climbing and we have not eaten today um other than breakfast we haven't eaten we haven't even had another coffee and it's 6 30 so so to fill the gap we're gonna go have a beer from our apartment <laughs> and then i think we're we're gonna go freshen up if we don't just completely crash when we get back to our apartment. But we will our see. apartment's right there. Oh, our apartment's right here. How convenient. We're Every home. street in the city is curved. So it gets very confusing trying to figure out where you are. It's like, I think it's to do with the way the Romans did it, but everything seems like it's like a labyrinth of circles, of ovals. Two days in Mateo's internal beautiful GPS. <laughs> Maps itself. I know where we go. Beautiful, sweaty, sweaty yeah, GPS. I'm a bit sweaty. <laughs> Having a little pre dinner snack while enjoying Friday night in the piazza. We ended up having dinner and drinks in our apartment and passed out pretty soon after, but eventually made it out on another night, which ended up being the worst night to go out for a South African. We're off to dinner now to try some traditional Tuscan slash Lucchese food. It was pouring all day and it finally cleared up a few hours ago. Oh my goodness. Stop. That is so cute. So we've come back outside and uh, we're very hungry. Matteo's not in his normal Italian looking uh, suave style. He's in his South Africa rugby jersey because the semifinals are tonight and we're playing England. And so we got to eat quick so we can watch the game. I don't know if we're going to make it. There's not a single pub in this town that is showing the rugby game. So we're going to have to return home to watch the rugby game. Italy is uh, way more of a soccer country. Even though they have a rugby team, they don't seem to care for it so much. So it's very hard to find a place in, uh, in Luca to watch it. In Florence, we always go to Lions Fountain. They will play the game, but uh, there's nowhere here that we found that will show it, so we have to watch it on the laptop. But to home. be honest, they're not much of a soccer country either. They, they're doing pretty badly. That's, that's harsh. Actually, they're doing pretty badly in all the sports. 
to leave me out. I'm a citizen. <laughs> you can take the boy out of Africa, but you can't take Africa out the boy. We have two restaurants that we wanted to look into. So we're gonna stop by the first one on the way to the second one and then decide which one we want to eat at. So we're walking on the main shopping street right now. It's called Via Filungo. And it's got all the big shops. Woo! Puddle! <laughs> I love that as Mateo looked up to check about the rain gutter falling on him, you just stepped in a massive puddle. I know, I was wondering what I know, the that was. was unfortunate. But Via Filungo has all the main stores. You've got your Spora, Calzedonia, Foot Locker, all of that. We've taken several strolls there during the day. But at night, it's still a very lovely vibe. I mean, it's been pouring with rain and people are still out. It's a Saturday night and the feeling's right. I'm so hungry. Okay, so, you know, as much as we wanted to try this place, Mateo and I don't have a budget for a Michelin store restaurant. Also, okay, they did have the truffle pasta that we wanted to try, but it's 25 euro a plate, and they don't have the other Tuscan dishes we were looking for, but uh, it is a Michelin store restaurant and it comes highly recommended. So if you have, you know, a little <laughs> bit more to spare, I mean, it's not like, it's not stupid expensive. Not highly recommended for much. No, I mean, just like, people we've chatted to. We want to check out this other place that also comes highly recommended, a little bit more budget friendly, and I think they have a few more of the OG Tuscan Lucchese dishes that we wanted to try. So we're gonna head there and see what's up. Okay, so we're like towards the outskirts of the city. Very quiet, very residential. We haven't really seen more than like one person on these streets. Literally the rugby kicks off in 55 minutes. So either we have to eat really fast or make another plan, we don't know. What is cool though is the city wall in front of us. Oh yeah. There's yeah. so many puddles on the ground I'm trying to avoid. Oh, we made it, I saw people in the window. Oh my God, a sign of life, a sign of life. I think we're here. Oh my goodness, look behind you. We did. Look behind you. That it's was like unexpected. You. This is literally such a quiet part of town, but like apparently a lot of locals come here. So let's see what's up. We can eat really fast, baby. Come on, we can do it. It's very oh. illegible. Whoa, that is like, that's like faded to the nth degree. Okay, so we just came to Trattoria de Giulio. They are full right now. We're gonna have to wait a while for a table. And the semifinals are just, if we lose this game, we're out of the World Cup. Kickoff is in about 45 minutes and we are actually starving. So even if kickoff wasn't coming up, I'm so hungry. I just don't feel like waiting for a table. But if you are here, these are the two places they do come highly recommended by. We know a few locals here. Um, so if you're here, do give them a try. But for now, I think we're gonna do classic Mateo and Misha pizzas. You could have guessed it. I'm not mad either. Get to watch a reggae. <laughs> Get to drink a beer, get to eat a pizza. Get to hang out together, I got... Yes, and I'm sorry, I forgot about that. That should be number one on the list. Wow. All right, I'll try not to be offended. <laughs> I got dressed up for a little walk. I feel like this has just become a walking tour of recommendations without us eating anywhere, but that's fine. Hopefully and you if guys there actually is a yourself. restaurant <laughs> that you guys recommend, be sure to comment below and let us know in Luca, what is the best place that you've ever eaten in the city? I love that. I would like to know also, we'll definitely be back here. Honestly, I thought at this point I'd be sick of pizza, yet somehow I find myself craving it, even though we've been eating it a couple times a week. I'm a little disgusted with myself, but also not, because pizza in Italy feels healthy somehow. What a beautiful piazza. <laughs> So we're pretty sure they're setting up for Comic-Con or the Luca Comic-Con because there's a giant tent that started getting put up like yesterday and it seems like they're building like a whole on building for it because it starts November 1st. So it's coming up super quick. Uh, we think this is one of the main tents. Matteo checked last year's map and this, this Piazza had Netflix's tent, I think. Um, so this might be Netflix again. Amazon Prime has a different Piazza like they each have their own piazzas in different spots. Apparently it's the biggest Comic-Con in Italy, if not in Europe itself. <laughs> we are unfortunately not gonna be here for it, but they are definitely building an insane structure here in the middle of this piazza. 
Mateo is just on the hunt. The He's Margarita checking prices. every menu. We check margarita prices because you have to start there to know how expensive the place is. I, is this still the? Oh, this still is probably still the best one. Yeah, this is still. No, but see, the problem is the other one had six euro margaritas, and the next pizza was ten. So. Oh, that's a problem. See, the margarita here is six fifty. That's not bad. That's actually no. very reasonable. The other ones are like eight euro. So we prefer this place. Cioè, è un evento veramente grande. Vengono milioni di di persone. So we were right. I was like, Matteo, let's ask them if this is. Can we just like confirm the speculation? And it is. Said so this is the Netflix tent. But they've started. And Matteo's like, why they started setting up so early? But there's a lot that goes into it. I mean, she said, well, like a million people are at this event. They sell eighty thousand tickets per day. Grazie. <laughs> Got him. From the place we came our first night, Toscana Tipica. They have a whole shop. Do they? How do we miss that? Okay, well, if we didn't have to we go watch that. rugby in literally five minutes, then we could explore more. Buona serata. Got the goods. I am starving. I'm like literally about to eat my own hand. Mateo just stepped in a giant puddle. Kickoffs in 10 minutes. <gasps> You just step in I the, just stepped in something and splashed myself. If you're visiting Luca anytime near their Comic and Games Festival, especially 10 days before, and you're coming to Piazza Anfiteatro, you're not going to get a good shot of the piazza. There's going to be a tent in the middle. So just keep that in mind. And that's around about the beginning of November and the end of October. Well, let's hope South Africa makes it to the finals because Mateo's dad is actually last minute going to Paris for the final, so here's hoping South Africa's actually in it. <laughs> Made it! Got our pizza! <laughs> On our tiny little computer, we got this! The Why game just started. Why is streaming in good quality though? I have pizza, it's okay. It's okay, we'll be fine, we'll be fine. I added pesto to my margarita. It's the way to go. That was way too, that's way too close for comfort. Way too close for One comfort. One point! Luckily their flat home's not far. 